I greet you in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons but one God. May his blessings be upon us all. <laughs> Collect for purity together, Almighty God. Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people, meekly kneeling upon our knees. Together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our deliberate fault. We have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the of life to the glory of your name almighty god who forgives all who truly repent have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. The collect 
for the week, collect for the nation, and the readings for this service. The Lord be with you. Shall we all pray together, bottom of feet, page 49. Together, Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all mankind may be brought to the glorious liberty of the sons of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Together, God our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in our vocation and ministry, we may be instruments of your love, and give your servants now to be ordained the needful gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Be seated. Hear the word of God as it is written in the book Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anathoth, in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jeho Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly. For I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It is tilting towards us from the north. The Lord said to me, From the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all their surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshiping what their hands have made. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall to stand against the old land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, 
and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you, and will rescue you, declares the Lord. This is the word of God. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. 
But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the rest. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of God. written in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 21, beginning at the 15th verse. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, 
Do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hot because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know that all things, you know all things, you know that I, I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Verily, truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then, said, then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what, that, what is that to you? You must follow me. This is the gospel of Christ. and ten by the choir.
Let us pray. Dispense and interpret your oracles, O God, as you did with our forefathers. And grant that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you in this service through Christ our Lord. Amen. The theme for our meditation in this service is Jehovah calls Jeremiah and commissions him. Jehovah calls Jeremiah and commissions him. And the text is taken from Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. In that passage, God shows a great love towards Jeremiah, who was known to be not only a young man, he was also a very talented complainant. He was also a very young lad who at the time of his call and commission would have been awash with the affairs of the world. Jeremiah, the servant of the living God. Jeremiah, the complainant. Jeremiah, the young lad. Jeremiah, the man saddled with the responsibility to lay the foundation for fearless, undiluted, and brazen message of Yahweh to his generation. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appoint you as a prophet to the nations. We have parallel references which eventually are the passages that we took in the epistle and the gospel. The details of Jeremiah, his background, his parental background, where he came from, the circumstance of his birth, the activities that permeated in the nation that necessitated God's call on him are all clearly written in this book. 
that we are using for worship. So I will not bother myself in going to tell you who Elkiah was, or Benjamin, or Joachim, or Josiah as kings of Judah, and Zedekiah, who eventually became the king in whose time events metamorphosed into reality. But before I come to that, in John chapter 21, verse 15 to 22, as we saw in the gospel, we also saw Jesus encountering Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, who is also known by students as the recantrant one, Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee. In our days in school, we call him the enjoyment man because he came from Cana, Ghana, Cana of Galilee where Jesus turned water into wine. So they do a lot of drinking. And for those who have been in the pilgrimage before, you know Galilee, Cana of Galilee is the place where the best wine in Israel is produced. Nathaniel is from that community. And then the sons of Zebedee. And two other disciples, totaling seven men, they went on what the navies will call Ahoy, ship Ahoy, taking a cruise on the sea in order to refresh themselves for a change of time. But primarily in the course of doing that, they were to fish and to take care of their financial needs and also maintain the stomach infrastructure. And so we'll not bother ourselves so much. But the important thing here is that out of 11 disciples, because Judah fell away, then seven men talented to whom Jesus depended for the entrenchment of the gospel and the delivering of the kerygma went to their old businesses. Then if you remove seven from 11, then it means the ministry of Jesus would have collapsed. These men, particularly painful enough, was that the disciple that Jesus so much loved, who leaned on him, who leaned on his breast at supper, it was also the one that followed Peter on the ship ahoy. Forgetting that unto whom much is given from him, much is expected. So in their fishing uh, activity on the Sea of Tiberia, throughout the night they labored and got nothing, not even crawfish. According to John 21 from verse 1 to 3, Jesus, having known exactly what, is, what was going on, because the Bible says that he knows our thoughts long before. He went to the seashore to wait for them. Before dawn, at the same hour during which he resurrected from the dead, that was the same time that he went to the riverside to wait for them. They did not recognize him as they were coming back in frustration, in disappointment. They didn't recognize that it was Jesus that was 
at the shore waiting for them. They didn't recognize him. Why? Why would they? Why would they? Is it not Evans who, in order to go to robbery, he reached Psalm 23? And that is an indication that it's operation, no mercy. Very antithetical to the schemes of the word of God. So in their fishing, in their escapades, they did not recognize their master. But in verse 4, Jesus at the shore early in the morning, and they did not recognize him. Jesus called on them. Friends. Oba, party. In our own parlance. Any show. And they said nothing. Throughout the night nothing. The same circumstance that enacted itself. Before Peter's call repeated itself again. In other words. When we are. When we find it difficult to part with our past, there will always be recurrence of the same incidents. And so, Jesus asked them, no catch. Okay, friends, cast your net on the right side of the boat. The same incident then repeated itself, and they cast the net. Meanwhile, they have not recognized that it is Jesus. But they are benefiting from the largess. There are many who are in the corridors of the church. They don't know Jesus. But they smile to the bank every day. There are many who don't know Jesus. But they believe in individual self-ministry. For the purpose of maximizing economic advantages it was after they have cast the net and they couldn't find they, there was no strength to pull the net out of the water it was then that it clicked to them this must be Jesus and that disciple that Jesus loved told them this is Christ this is Christ nobody can perform this feat except Christ he's enacting what he did before And when they brought the net ashore, it contained 153 large fishes. And the net did not break. If God wants to bless you, he looks beyond your sins. Knowing that when you get the wealth, you will use it to better the ministry. So you will not look into your sin before blessing you. And that is why I appreciate the brother who does our 20 million to this church. And also empower the women of this church with 20 million annually. Shall we clap for this type of man? It is one thing to get the blessing. And it is another thing to plow it back into the service of the giver. Nobody does that easily. And Jesus told them, bring some fish. Let, let prepare breakfast. Let's prepare breakfast. And after they brought the fish, Jesus prepared it himself. Roasted it. Roasted fish. Kebab. Very beautiful. And brought bread and prayed on it, their eyes instantly became further open and he served them the meal. So it was in the course of eating this meal that Jesus asked them, Peter, do you love me more than these things? Peter, do you love me more than this? And he said, feed my sheep. It means provide hope. Provide succor, provide solace, feed the sheep. Means quality leadership.
teaching, education, and that's why the, the, the three policy of the bishop, the priest you want to have and pastor must be academically sound, must be spiritually sound, and one other, I have forgotten it. Bishop reminded me. <laughs> and morally sound. These are the three principles. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, according to Psalm 139. I knew you. What does that mean? In the productive process, the sperm, watery, gives birth to genes. Genes give birth to spermatozoa. The spermatozoa gives birth to the fetus, and the fetus becomes a child. All these processes, stage after stage, are organized and controlled and monitored and accomplished by God Himself. So the only thing the man comes to celebrate, woman comes to celebrate. You don't burn. Hey, hey, glory be to God. Do you know where they are coming from? So before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. But you protested and said, I'm, I'm only a child. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. On a kokpetu. On a kuko. But God commanded him and said, wherever I send you and to whoever I send you, you must go. And so, very soon, disposition will come. Will you be ready to go to where you are sent? Today is a day ordained by the paraclete, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We shall quote them in the course of the ordination. We shall quote them in the in terms of the uh, prefer, I mean, uh, collation. They will all be quoted. The mandate given to Jeremiah is to address the 22 sins of Israel courageously. And they are cardinal. It is phenomenal. As in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 6 to 19. And so, of this ordination, collation, and convocation, the Jeremianic past, the Messianic past, the Advent and the Parousia, serves as a watershed on the post-apostolic era. It also serves as a panacea for the 21st century Episcopal Evangelical Mission. The panacea is a guide, like the compass for the sailor, for the ship, for the captain. The panacea is for the heads of the church and the, those who come to be joined in the church and those who come to minister in the church as we are seeing today, it is, to, it is the compass to guide them from age to age. It fulfills the divine call. It fulfills the divine call. It fulfills the divine commission of the Lord. It fulfills the eternal and salvific plan of Yahweh and his Christ as enshrined in the Hallelujah Chorus that we are going to hear later. It is generational. It is futuristic. It is apocalyptic. It is eschatological. Therefore, all generations, particularly we are looking in our own generation because of the stability of faith, but the nation is already in economic exile. That's what we'll be discussing in the Bible study. The nation is in exile. Economic exile. And you know it. Families know it. Parents know it. The church also knows it. Who will bring it out of the doldrum? It's the Jeremiah of our day. And that is why they are sending you to the field. So you must come to terms with world issues. 
You must be able to educate yourself, to study and make yourself approved, not only in the Bible, but also in the secular. A pastor cannot be novice when political issues are discussed, when economic issues are discussed, when environmental issues are discussed. You cannot be ignorant because the nation looks up to you. Today, the people, the pulpit is silent. The people, pulpit is silent, and few be those who dare, except during the synod alone, in the charge that we hear addressing to the nation. The governors no more come. The presidents no more come. And the same people who plunge Nigeria into its problem during the time of their service in the army and said Nigeria cannot restructure over their dead body, either fiscally or politically. Today, on their sick bed and in their old age, they are now advocating that Nigeria must restructure immediately. God has a word for them through Jeremiah. They will go into destruction. They will go into extinction. They will go into self-annihilation. The nation is bigger than individuals. Whatever you acquire, illegally and wrongly, don't be surprised. If it is possible to come from the dead, you will come to discover that the empire you leave behind palm tree has grown from the middle of the house and busted on the roof. Then what does it profit a man when he gains the whole world and he suffers the loss of his soul? Ordinance. Keep your head. In other words, keep your nose straight. Keep your nose straight. You cannot be a deacon and an adjacent at the same time. The arch before your name does not belong to you. It is the deacon that is yours. So you let the person hold the arch, put the arch on his head, and carry the consequence of the administration. You are not the accounting officer. Wait for your time. Priests, know your sacerdotal responsibility. commission that the Lord has given to you and the baby adjacents know that we were here before you my coat is now it has changed color the day I wear it I'm sure many people will photograph me your, co your coat is new know your level And remember the demands of the office. And to the congregation, know your call. Your call is that of obedience. Your call is that of service. Your call is that of holy charity. Remember your priests. Remember your church. Who pray day and night for you. For if you eat alone, you die alone. And now unto God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all honor and glory, dominion and majesty, world without end.
Reverend Father in God, we present Ordinant Philip Omote Agri Ordinant Glory. Aida Remekru Imon Yesa Ordinant Wisdom Otuko Akbovili Ordinant Wifu Shikuo Neta Yobodo Ordinant Simeon Onon Yode Igbe Dobo Ordinant Goffrey Obakbolulu Oko Beno To be ordained to the office of deacon in the church of God Make sure that the persons who you present to us are suitable and qualified in their learning and character to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and their divine of his church. We have examined them and find them so to be. My dear people of God, those whose duty it is to inquire about these persons and examine them have found them to be of godly life and sound learning and believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry. We gather here as members of one holy Catholic and apostolic church to witness the ordination of these ordinance into the church ministry. It is your duty if any one of you knows any impediment or notable crime in any of these persons presented to us to be ordained deacons, for which he should not be admitted to that office, to let us know in the name of God and tell us what sort of crime or impediment is. Is it therefore your wish that they should be admitted to this office? Will you uphold them in their ministry? Let the declaration and oaths that have been administered be affirmed. Do you reaffirm the ordination oaths you have taken? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. in God, we present Reverend Christopher Omodonigo Idolo, Reverend, Reverend Joseph Efe Uruogo, to be ordained to the office of priest in the, the Church of, of God. God. Make sure that the persons who you present to us are suitable and qualified in their learning and character to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and their divine of his church. We, we have, have examined, examined them and found and them so, so to, be. to be. My dear people of God, those whose duty it is to inquire about these persons and examine them, have found them to be of godly life and sound learning, and believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry. We gather here as members of one holy Catholic and apostolic church to witness the ordination ordinance into the church ministry. It is your duty, if any one of you knows any impediment or notable crime in any of these persons presented to ordained priest, for which he should not be admitted to that office, to let us know in the name of God and tell us what sort of crime or impediment is. Is 
Is it therefore your wish that they should be admitted to this office? Will you put them in their ministry? Amen. Let the oaths that have been administered be affirmed. Do you affirm the oath of office you have taken? I will. I do. We present the Reverend Solomon Ogagogene Igaruru, the Reverend Izuna Chijoke Eze, and the Reverend Terry Eterigo Onloko, to you to be collated canons in his diocese. We are ready to collect them, but first let the declaration and oaths made, subscribed, and taken be affirmed. Do you reaffirm the declarations you have taken? I do. I do. I do. Otto Brissel, the Reverend Canon Stanley Jehan, the Reverend Canon Lawrence Odekemu, the Reverend Canon Benedict Akoguma. To you to be collected at Jenkins in these houses. We are ready to collect them. But first, let the declarations and oaths made, subscribed, and taken be affirmed. Do you reaffirm the declaration you have taken? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do.
deacon is called to serve the church of God and to work with its members in caring for the poor, the needy, the sick, and all who are in trouble. He is to strengthen the faithful, search out the careless and the indifferent, and to preach the word of God in the place to which he is licensed. A deacon assists the priest, under whom he serves, in leading the worship of the people, especially in the administration of the Holy Communion. He may baptize when required to do so. It is his general duty to do such pastoral work as is entrusted to him. In order that we may know your mind and purpose and that you may be strengthened in your resolve to fulfill your ministry, you must make the declarations we now put to you. Do you believe so far as you know your own heart that God has called you to the office and work of a deacon in his church? I believe that God has called me. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do accept them. Do you believe the doctrine of the Christian faith as the Church of Nigeria has received it? And will you, in your ministry, expound and teach it? I believe it and we so do. Will you accept the discipline of this church? and give due respect to those in authority. By the help of God, I will. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to uphold the truth of the gospel against error? By the help of God, I will. Will you strive to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ? Will you promote unity, peace, and love among all Christian people, and especially among those whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known to all people? By the help of God, I will. Almighty God, who has given you the will to undertake all these things, give you also the strength to perform them, that he may complete that work which he has begun in you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord, and to share in the renewing of his world. Now, you are called to work as pastors, priests, prophets, and teachers, together with your bishop and fellow clergy, and to take your share in the councils of the church. As priests, you will triple your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ and to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness, to penetrate sinners, to preside at the administration of holy baptism and at the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood and to perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. Because you cannot bear the weight 
of this ministry in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray earnestly for his Holy Spirit. Pray that he will each day enlarge and enlighten your understanding of the scriptures so that you may grow stronger and more mature in your ministry. We trust that long ago, you began to weigh and ponder all this and that you are fully determined by the grace of God to give yourselves wholly to his service and devote to him your best powers of mind and spirit so that as you daily follow the rule and teaching of our Lord with the heavenly assistance of his Holy Spirit, you may grow up into his likeness and sanctify the lives of all with whom you have to do. In order that we may know your mind and purpose and that you may be strengthened in your resolve to fulfill your ministry, you must make the declarations we now put to you. Do you believe so far as you know your own heart that God has called you to the office and work of a priest in his church? I believe that God has called me. Do you know, do you now in the presence of the church commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do accept them. Are you determined to be diligent in the reading and studying of the Holy Scriptures and in seeking the knowledge of such things that may make you a strong and more able minister of Christ? I am so determined. I am so determined. Do you believe the doctrine of the Christian faith as the Church of Nigeria has received it, and your ministry expound and teach it? I believe, I believe it, and, will so and I will so do. Will you accept the discipline of this church and give due respect to those in authority? By the help of God, I will. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? By the help of God, I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family of God. By the help of God, I will. Will endeavor to minister the word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant that the reconciling love of Christ will be known and received. By the help of God, I will. Will you promote unity, peace, and love among all Christian people and especially among those whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. Will you strive to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ? By the help of God, I will. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading holy scriptures, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to uphold the truth of the gospel against error? By the help of God, I will. Almighty God, who has given you the will to undertake all these things, give you also the strength to perform them, that he may complete that work which he has begun in you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We now commend the ordinance to the prayers of the people.
Trinity one God Delighting your ministers with knowledge and understanding Especially we pray for Nicholas our primates Friday Christian our bishop and other bishops, priests and the kings, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Bless your servant Philip, glory. Wisdom, Wilful, Simeon and Godfrey, Christopher, Joseph, now to the ordained deacon and priests, that they may serve your church and reveal your glory in the world. Bless their homes and families that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. That the world may have peace and that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nation and people. those in authority, especially Muhammadu, our president, Ifai, our governor, may fear God, love justice, and promote dignity and freedom of every person. Yeah. All who have died in the communion of the church, and those whose faith is known to you alone with all the saints may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, we commend ourselves and one another to Christ our Lord. Lord, you are merciful and forgive our sins. You hear those who pray in the name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may obtain according to your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Philip, Amote, Agri, receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a deacon in the church of God, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take the authority to do the work of a deacon in the church of God committed to your charge, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Glory at the real room there, Imoni son. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a deacon in the church of God, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
take the authority to do the work of a deacon in the church of God committed to your charge. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wisdom, Ochuku, Akpaviri. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a deacon in the church of God. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take the authority to do the work of a deacon in the church of God committed to your charge. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a deacon in the church of God. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take the authority to do the work of a deacon in the church of God committed to your charge. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Simeon, Honorable Obedobo, receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a deacon in the Church of God, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Take the authority to do the work of a deacon in the Church of God committed to your charge, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Free, but receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a deacon in the church of God, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Take the authority to do the work of a deacon in the church of God committed to your charge, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Source 
teach us to and glorify you almighty father because you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession a royal priesthood a universal church we praise and glorify you because you have given us your only son jesus christ to be the apostle and high priest of our faith and shepherd of our souls we praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death and that having ascended into heaven he has given his gifts abundantly making some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers to equip your people for the work of ministry and to build up this body and now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants who we ordain in your name to share the ministry entrusted to your church. May they exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people. May they offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. May they boldly proclaim the covenant. May they boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant and now as you have called them to your service make them worthy of the calling make them faithful pastors patient teachers and wise counselors make them modest strong and constant to observe the dis discipline of christ grant them that in all things they may serve without reproach so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world accept these our prayers most merciful father through your son jesus christ our lord to whom with the holy spirit belong glory and honor worship and praise now and forevermore Christopher Omodonigo Idolo received the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a priest in the Church of God now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. Who sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And who sins you thus retain, they are retained. And be a faithful dispenser of the Word of God and of the Holy Sacraments in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. As an anointed servant of God, do your prophetic and priestly work according to the order of Christ, your Lord and Savior. May he bless your ministry. Receive this Bible as a sign of authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacraments. Jo 
Joseph, Efe, Urugu, receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a priest in the church of God now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. Who say you forgive, they are forgiven. And who says you thus retain, they are retained. And be a faithful dispenser, the word of God and of the Holy Sacraments, in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. As an anointed servant of God, do your prophetic and priestly work according to the order of Christ, your Lord and Savior. May he bless your ministry. Receive this Bible as a sign of authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacraments. of this congregation we now wish to collect our beloved in Christ Reverend Solomon Ogagaogene Igaru Reverend Izuna Chijuke Eze and Reverend Terry Eterigo Oloko as canons in this diocese who before us and before many witnesses had consented to be bound by the regulations of the diocese and canons and paid due and canonical obedience and had assented to the 39 articles of religion and the book of common prayer. But as this office is one of heavy responsibility, we request all of you present to join me in praying to God Almighty that he may grant our brothers grace to perform the task of their offices accordingly and that they may faithfully keep the vows which they made at the ordination as priests in the church of Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Ever living God, strengthen and sustain Solomon Ogagaogene Igaru. Izuna Chijoke Eze and Terry Eterigo Oloko, that with patience and understanding they may love and care for your people and grant that together they may follow Jesus Christ, offering to you his gifts and talents through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
Oui. Right Reverend Ezezi Ide, Christian. By divine permission, Bishop of the Diocese of Ori, to all our beloved in Christ, the Reverend Solomon Ogagaogene Igaru, the Reverend Izuna Chidioke Eze, and the Reverend Terry Eterigo Oloko. Clerk, greetings. We do. By this presence, give and grant unto you, in whose fidelity, morals, learning, sound doctrine, and diligence, we do confide, fully confide, our license and authority to perform the office of canon within our diocese and jurisdiction, in preaching the word of God, in reading the common prayers, and performing all other ecclesiastical duties belonging to the said office according to the form prescribed in the Book of Common Prayer and the canons and constitutions in that behalf lawfully established and promulgated and not otherwise or in any other manner. You, having first before us, right Reverend Christian Esesi Ide, made and subscribed such declaration and taken such oaths as are by law or custom in such as required, and we do by this presence authorize you to receive and enjoy all the singular stipends, profits, and advantages whatsoever belonging to the said office. In witness whereof, we have caused our Episcopal seal to be here unto set and affixed this second day of July in the year of our Lord, 2017, and in the twelfth year of our consecration. The Reverend Canon Solomon Ugaga Ogene Igaruru accept this charge, which is mine and yours, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. The Reverend Canon Izuna Chijoke Eze accept this charge, which is mine and yours, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> See that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. The Reverend Canon Terry Eterigo Oloko accept this charge, which is mine and yours, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> See that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Dearly beloved, in the name of God and in the presence of this congregation, we now wish to collate our beloved in Christ, the Reverend Canon Wilfred Aguirre, the Reverend Canon Endurance Otobrisen, the Reverend Canon Stanley Jehan, the Reverend Canon Lawrence Odechemu, and the Reverend Canon Benedict Akpoguma. As advocate in this diocese, who before us and before many witnesses have consented to be bound by the regulations of the diocese and canons, and pay due and canonical obedience to the bishop, and had assented to the 39 articles of religion and the Book of Common Prayer. But as this office is one of heavy responsibility, we request all of you present to join me in praying to God Almighty that he may grant our brothers grace to perform the task of the office accordingly and that they may faithfully keep the vows which they made at their ordination as priests in the Church of Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. ever-living God, strengthen and sustain Wilfred Egere, Endurance Otobrise, Stanley Jehia, Lawrence Odechemu, and Benedict Akboguma, that with patience and understanding they may love and care for your people, and grant that together they may follow Jesus Christ, offering to you their gifts and talents through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We, Christian, it says it by divine permission, Bishop of the Diocese of Worry, to all our well beloved in Christ, Wilfred Egere, Endurance Otobrise. Stanley Jehia, Lawrence Odechemu, Benedict Akpoguma. Clerk, greetings. We do by this presence give and grant unto you, in whose fidelity, morals, learning, sound doctrine, and diligence, we do fully confide our license and authority to perform the office of Adi King within our diocese and jurisdiction preaching the word of God, in reading the common prayers, 
and performing all other ecclesiastical duties belonging to the said office according to the form prescribed in the Book of Common Prayer. And the canons and constitutions in that behalf lawfully established and promulgated and not otherwise or in any other manner you having first before us right reverend christian Ede, made and subscribed such declaration and taking such oaths as are by law or custom in such case required and we do by this presence authorize you to receive and enjoy all the singular stipends profits and advantages whatsoever belonging to the said office in witness whereof we have caused our episcopal seal to be here unto set and affixed this second day of july in the year of our lord 2017 in the twelfth year of our consecration we friend again accept this charge which is mine and yours in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit see that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ the good shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Endurance, Otto Brisset, accept this charge, which is mine and yours, in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you, as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Stanley, Jehia, accept this charge, which is mine and yours, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See that you are, you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Lawrence Odechemu, Accept this charge, which is mine and yours, in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever Amen. benedict Apoguma, accept this charge which is mine and yours in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit 
see that you are faithful to the trust now committed to you as a true pastor under the great shepherd of souls. The God of peace that brought again from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. My dear people of God, we beg you to pay proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with great respect and love because of the work they do. And be at peace among yourselves. Take a chorus as they go to their seats. Reverend Father in God, I present to you these wives of clergymen for your admonition and induction. You are aware that your husband has been ordained, having been called by God. Are you convinced that you are called to support him in his ministry? Yes, I do. Will you endeavor to be zealous, honest, sincere, and motherly in the leadership of the women in the church? Do you accept the Holy Scripture as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do accept them. Will you endeavor to improve yourself in the knowledge of the same Scriptures so as to teach it to your children and especially to your fellow women in the church and the congregation to which your husband is assigned? Will you present yourself a humble matron regarding the elderly women as mothers and the younger ones as sisters and all in the same spirit serve Christ? By the help of God, I will. Do you pledge yourself to be loyal to the wife of the bishop and all your superiors in all things lawful and honest? I do so pledge. God be my helper. Knowing fully well that you are not able to do these things on your own, Will you commit yourself to earnest prayer so as to receive strength from God to fulfill your ministry? By the help of God, I will. Make the following declarations and oaths. I, I Edna, confess before God and his church that I have never been a member of the Greek Church or any secret court.
Keys to your Bible. Congregation, please stand to welcome your new ministers. Today, we celebrate the gift of ordained ministry in God's church. We look greet your new ministers and their wives and welcome them in Christ's name. I greet the new ministers and their wives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My fellow workers in the Lord, we present to you our beloved Reverend Philip, Reverend and Mrs. Philip Almate Agri. Reverend Glory Adarewune Imonisa. Reverend and Mrs. Wisdom Achuku Akpaviri. Reverend and Mrs. Wilfu Chukuneta Chibuzo. Reverend and Mrs. Simeon Onorode Ogbedobo. And Reverend and Mrs. Godfrey Obakororo Owobeno Owa Vindikins. So to we present to you the Reverend and Mrs. Christopher Omodonigo Idolo. And the Reverend and Mrs. Joseph F. Urogo, who have been priesthood. So we present to you the Reverend Canon Solomon Ogagaogena Igaro and Mrs. The Reverend Canon and Mrs. Izuna Chidoke Eze. And the Reverend Canon and Mrs. Terry Eterigo Oloko. <laughs> so, too, we present to you the Venerable and Mrs. Wilfred Egere. The Venerable and Mrs. Endurance Otobrisel. <laughs> the Venerable and Mrs. Stanley Jehiel. <laughs> the Venerable and Mrs. Lawrence Odechemu. <laughs> and by no means the least, the Venerable and Mrs. Benedict Akoguma. Whom we have made deacons, priests, and collected canons and adequates respectively in this diocese. Will you pay them due respect and humbly work with them as your fellow workers in your ministry? Amen. 
the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Everlasting God. 
And now we give you thanks because within the royal priesthood of your church, you ordain ministers to proclaim the word of God, to care for your people, and to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant together. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed be he that has come and is to come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy, truly blessed are you, are you, O Heavenly Father, who of your tender love to us mankind did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who may there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute and in his gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again, with the same night that he was betrayed. Took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is My blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, the remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, having in remembrance the precious death and passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, do this in remembrance of him as he had commanded. Until his coming again, giving thanks to you for the perfect redemption which you have wrought for us in him. We give thanks to you, we praise you, we glorify you, O Lord our God. And we most humbly pray you, O merciful Father, to sanctify with your Holy Spirit us and your own gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless may be the communion of the blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together to him, we may all attain to the unity of the faith unto him who is the head, even Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Solemnly together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in your own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crowd. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Holy things to holy people, if any is holy, let him come. If any is not, let him repent. 
The Lord is here. There is one holy, one Lord Jesus Christ. To the glory of God forever. Bless forever. Amen. be with you let us pray so if the sun sets you free you will be free indeed as our Savior taught us so we pray our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation or deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen almighty father we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your son and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your holy spirit we thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray for the Venerable Wilfred de Guerre, Venerable Endurance Otobrise, the Venerable Stanley Jehia, the Venerable Lawrence Odechemu, and the Venerable Benedict Apoguma, our new Addicts. The Reverend Canon Solomon, the Reverend Canon Izuna Chijokeze, and the Reverend Canon Terry, a Terrigo, 
or local of our new canons. The Reverend Christopher Omodonigo Idolo and the Reverend Joseph Efe Urogo, our new priest. And Philip, Reverend Philip Omote Agri, the Reverend Glory Adarewrune Imonisa, the Reverend Wisdom Ochuko Akpoviri, the Reverend Wilfu Chukuneta Chibuzo, the Reverend Samuel Onoriode Ogbedobo, and the Reverend Godfrey Obakoruru Owobeno, Dickens, respectively, that they may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with them may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The prayer of thanksgiving together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Children of God, praise the Lord. Can you lift up your hands and shout hallelujah?
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Again, Lord, we are full of thanks as we come to the, to the end of this service of ordination and collation. Best blessings that have been bestowed. We didn't come with, we are going home with. We are indeed grateful. And our prayer is that these blessings, Lord, will be permanent in the name of Jesus. We also take this time to still remember our country, Nigeria. We pray for our leaders, particularly pray for the acting president. The Lord, as so much is on his shoulders, he needs wisdom, he needs knowledge from above, he needs divine direction, and especially as he's your son. Father, endow him with all he needs in a time like this to be able to move Nigeria forward in the name of Jesus. The entire week is in, is in your hands. Just go ahead of us and we come behind. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. Blessed be the name. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.